Now, a court in Germany has today sentenced a former Syrian intelligence official to four and a half years in prison for complicity in crimes against humanity. It is the first case of its kind prosecuting members of Bashar al-Assad's regime for atrocities committed during the civil war. At the trial, prosecutors argued that Iyad al-Kharib had helped to arrest protesters who were later tortured and murdered by the regime. He was handed a four-and-a-half-year jail sentence. Covering this story for us today is our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Armin, tell us a bit more, then, about the person who is at the heart of this story. Yeah, Nadia, this is an extraordinary trial on many levels. I mean, firstly, his own life story. So he delivered protesters to this notorious detention centre in Damascus. He later defected. He fled Syria. He spent time in Turkey and Greece before arriving in Germany three years ago. And it's it's interesting that he uh, didn't seem to particularly hide his life story. Uh, he was apparently quite relaxed about justice, perhaps one day catching up with him, uh, perhaps thinking that being a defector would somehow shield him but it didn't in the end. Um, on a symbolic level, you mentioned in your introduction the first uh, judgment of this kind uh, since the Arab Spring came to uh, Syria almost 10 years ago, since those early protests were, were put down in Syria. And on a political level, this is very important as well. It shows that universal justice, universal, sorry, universal jurisdiction can work, that even if you commit crimes in a country, they can be uh, judged in another country. Um, tell us a bit about where this verdict might leave some of the other victims of the Assad regime who are also hoping that they can uh, get justice after what happened to them. Yeah, I mean, that that's very difficult. Uh, th this, this man was described by prosecutors as a cog in the machine, but obviously those in charge of the machine itself, uh, they're not in the dock. Uh, for years, human rights activists have been urging the United Nations Security Council to come together in order that all crimes related to Syria can be investigated, not just uh, those uh, by government forces and officials, but also uh, those committed by opposition fighters, jihadists, militia groups, and, and so forth. Uh, but as we know, the Security Council remains deeply divided, so it won't refer Syria to the International Criminal Court, uh, and the ICC is pretty limited when it comes to Syria anyway, because Syria never signed the, uh, the Rome Statute, which uh, is the ICC governing treaty. So while the ICC might be able to do something using some other kind of jurisdiction going through Jordan, which is a neighboring country, which has ratified the Rome Statute, but it's clearly very limited in terms of what it can do in Syria itself. All right, Armand Georgian, thank you very much indeed uh, for your analysis there.